Hi, welcome to WTJR. Uh, thanks for tuning in. This is Transforming Times in Christ, and my name is Anthony Cunningham, and I'm uh, thankful to uh, be sharing with you this evening and, and uh, digging into the Holy Bible, the Word that, that comes to transform and change us uh, and do such a great work in us. Um, I know that that there are, are some of you that, that tune in that that are struggling, that that don't see the fruit of, of uh, you know, what God promises uh, coming into your lives yet. Um, I get to uh, talk to quite a few people weekly um, through our Victorious Living Ministry. Um, and, and I do. I, I do understand um, that patience is a, is a major, major thing that we got to have in trusting God. Um, but, but during those times of waiting, that's what I want to talk to you about. During those times when, when you're waiting for, for God to move in certain areas, there's, there's a work that He's doing that, that we have to understand is a part of the process. Of, and it's a transforming work. You see, a lot of times um, we as, as people that, that get up in our life and, and, and purpose to our lives to follow Jesus for the reason of Him blessing me, it, 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 we, we might find ourselves let down many times. Um, you know, I have to say this today, but, but what Jesus did for us was so amazing that, that there's questions that, that we still search for that the answers are already there. I hear many people say, I don't know if God loves me. And I want you to understand if this is a question that's ever been on your mind, all you have to do is look at the cross of Christ. And that is the biggest I love you that we could ever receive from anything. That's what, that's what Jesus said. That, that the, the greatest, greatest act of love is laying down your life for another. And, and God loves you so much that He gave His Son for you. Not only to send you to heaven. If that's all He did, that would be plenty. But He did it so that you might have a purpose for your life, that you might have hope, that, that you might have what it is that only He can give you, and that is to be transformed into that original created purpose and image and have that original value to your life that He created you for. So often we find ourselves looking for this flesh to be fulfilled and, and, and desires of it to to be at peace and, and pleased, and, and we weigh our day on those kind of things. But if only we could go back to the cross of Christ and see that we are worth all that, that God has done for us through that cross, through that resurrection, through that ascension, so that the Holy Spirit could come and live inside of us, then we could understand that our peace doesn't come from this flesh being fulfilled. It comes from what He did for us and how valuable we are to Him as His children. I know that God, He's not here to just serve us, to just make everything okay. And a lot of times the American uh, gospel, the, the convenient Jesus has, we only come to Him when we want something or when we need something and for Him to give us a better day. But He's here to father us. He's here to father us and to change us for His glory. If He didn't show it through His life, then there's nothing else that we need to look at because He's shown everything through the life of Christ that He did. He gave us everything pertaining to life and to godliness is, is what He's given us. But we have to be spiritually minded. We can't be fleshly minded. Um, fleshly minded produces death, destruction, but to be spiritually minded produces life and peace. And what does this look like to be spiritually minded? It means I'm looking at Jesus. It means I'm seeking out the kingdom of heaven for it to be fulfilled here on this earth through our own lives. For us to be a light unto somebody else. For us to love somebody else. For us to, to bring hope to somebody else. That, it, that what Christ did is for all. And, and the reason why Jesus took sin out of the way was so that He could get to you. 
That's why he removed it, because it is sin that separates us from God. And he removed that so he could get to you and come in and be the father that, that we all need in our lives. Today I want to continue in the book of Ephesians, and that's exactly what he did. If we start in verse 1, we see that, that in you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. That we were dead in those places of hope, that we were dead in those places of, of hope for a future, our, our hope for our lives of having a purpose, that, w that we lived our lives just as everybody else that was born into this world, the scriptures tell us, according to the flesh, the desires of the flesh, the lust of the mind and of the flesh, and we were by nature children of wrath. But Jesus gave an answer to us to be born again. It says if we go down in Ephesians 2 and in verse 4, it says, But God, but God who is rich in mercy because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, He made us alive together with Christ, that it is by grace you have been saved. And He raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Isn't that amazing how different God's love is from our worldly carnal love? Because the, the love that we used to walk in as we lived according to the flesh and, and, and of the, the old nature was a love that had to be deserved. It, it's a love that had to be earned. Uh, that we could love people just because they did something for us or, or they were lovable for us because it was more convenient for us to love them. But it isn't it amazing how God comes in with His unchanging, unfailing, undeserving love, His grace, and says right in the midst of, of you uh, living in, in a certain way, even if it isn't pleasing to me, I'm going to love you anyway, but, but there's something I'm going to do in the midst of that, and, and that is I'm going to come in and love you and cause you to be alive to me, alive to Jesus, and, and see why it is that I love you even in the midst of all that, and that is so that you can come out of that and, and purpose to follow me, that, that there's a love that, that motivates us and changes us. That there's an answer for everything that we've walked in according to the lust and desires of that flesh. And that answer is to be born again. That every one of us must be. In verse 7, it's a, or verse 6, it says, And He raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. It's what God did through giving up His Son for you and I. And I say you and I because it is an undeserved thing. It is by grace. It is, it, it's just because He loves you. It isn't an earned thing that He's done for you. And the reason why I'm sharing these things is because I know us people. I know us in the flesh. I, I know us that want to move towards God and, and be what it is with those desires inside of us, but then we're still allowing things from our past to mark us. We're still allowing things from our past to prevent all that God has done for us. It's like a roadblock that we put up ourselves because for some reasons, some people are still comfortable um, in misery or, or that old past or, or talking about it. But man, what God wants to do inside of your life is brand new. And it just comes through surrendering your heart to Him, through opening this Holy Bible and just believing it and agreeing with Him and allowing it to change you, change your thinking. Allow it to create a perspective in you on how to look at others through the same kind of love that God looked at you that you don't have to deserve my love anymore. That it doesn't depend on you how my day goes. My day is going to go a certain way because of Him and my relationship with Him. That I'm going to be able to be love to you because of Him loving me first. And that's the reason 
why I love you and care about you. That's the reason why I'm going to go out of my way and get up when it's inconvenient to show you love. It's because of Him that lives inside of us. Not because of what you've done to me or what, or what you've done for me. It's because I want to be who He's called me to be and who He's changed me into. And the foundation of that is love. Let's go on in verse 8 in chapter 2 of Ephesians. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift from God. And that's what's so amazing, is that when a gift is given, it usually doesn't say, here you go, here's your gift, now give me something back right away. Usually, it's a, you get a gift, you freely receive it. And I believe that's what God is wanting us to say today. Don't allow the gift of love, don't allow the, His gift of salvation to be looked at as something that you deserved. Look at it as, as He loves you and wants to father you and be a father to you. I know the scriptures tell us that, you know, us being carnal uh, fathers, how, how we know to give good gifts to our children. It says, how much more does our Heavenly Father know how to give the Holy Spirit to His children? Man, that's such a beautiful gift that He's given to us. So often, confessing Christians are, are trying to live outside of this leading of the Holy Spirit, outside of this Word of God, changing their thinking. And it leads to a distorted uh, form of, of Christianity that we see all over America today. And it's trying to create our own image of who God is and try to create our own way of thinking of, of how He looks at us. And a lot of it's dependent on, on our past and those things that try to mark us from our past. But I'm here to tell you today that, like verse 9 says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is undeserved. I don't get good enough to, to, to receive this in my life. And I want you to understand that today. That what God has for you, you don't have to get up and, and earn it and do all these good deeds for Him to do it. Today I want you to take the opportunity and simply get up in your heart and ask Him to come in and, and do what it is that He created you for and through your life. Thank you. I will pray.